All right, chapter four. We're looking at the Dutch Stonewall and the Catalan attempts by White. And this chapter is going to be a good one because both Jesse and I enjoy playing the Catalan for White. Yep, and uh, when I saw that we're recommending the Dutch against the Catalan, it uh, shook me because I really don't like facing the Dutch. It's not a uh, it's not a an opening that gives Black a big advantage, but it's just really tricky to figure out kind of how to break it down or where to put your pieces even. So uh, it'll be nice to kind of dig into it. So uh, move order, we're gonna look at d4, d5, c4, and c6. So our Slav type of uh, setup, consistent with the rest of our moves. Knight f3 and e6. So we're in familiar territory here, and we're going to look at a few different moves. So like Matt said, g3, um, e3, and queen c2, all sort of uh, Catalan setups and just standard like d4 c4 type stuff yeah so e3 a little bit not not so much the Catalan let's start with that um, that's the most popular and then we'll loop back around and kind of look at those Catalan attempts so after e3 we're going right for it f5 full stonewall dutch territory and in Cheskel's fashion we're going to try to give you a few lines that are a little bit offbeat some different ideas that you can throw at your opponent so here, knight c3, this is the most common move, played over half the time. It's actually not the most accurate move, because if you're used to facing the Dutch from the white point of view, or even from the black point of view, you know that oftentimes that b1 knight wants to head to d2, where it defends the knight on f3, and both knights kind of want to head to maybe this e5 square, the pawn comes to b3, and this bishop can come out to b2 or a6. So when you see knight c3, it's the most common move, but keep in mind, it's not the most accurate move, and your opponent may not be prepped. Okay, so now this is the chess goal's wrinkle. Knight to h6. And the idea with knight h6, the knight can come back to f7 later. We're going to put this knight onto f6, play queen to d6, and we're going to then go for g5 and get that quick pawn storm going while the center is locked up and hopefully we can make our opponents very uncomfortable. What do you think of this line from the white point of view? Uh, well, from the white point of view, it looks scary. So if I flip the board, is your board flipped? No, it's not. Oh, <laughs> I could flip okay. it. I'm just flipping it for me. Um, but yeah, this, this pawn storm is kind of the main idea that is really hard to kind of uh, defend against or to know what to do. Um, so I never like seeing it, even though black is voluntarily really weakening their position. It's tough to navigate, so we're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of fun play here. So uh, let's kind of continue down the line. Here we have two different uh, lines we're gonna look at: one with Bishop D3 and one with uh, Knight E5 right away. So let's start with Bishop D3. And this is kind of the main line, the more standard way to develop. Um, we could go. I mean, we can play a lot of stuff here, but Knight D7. Um, so we're kind of making knight e5, uh, or preventing knight e5, because if they play there, we can just take, take, and maybe like a quick, uh, quick knight f2, and there's no pawn to defend that other pawn. Or yeah, or even uh, knight to g4. So knight e5, oh, sure, go forward. knight takes, pawn takes, and if, the, if white plays f4 there, we do have d4. Okay, yeah. So... We're kind of ready for uh, knight e5 by, by starting with knight d7. So that's something to keep in mind. White wants to play knight e5. If you can get this in before knight e5, that's usually a good move order to play in this chapter. So now let's look at castle. Now we're going to play bishop to d6, completely preventing this strong move, knight to e5. Most common move is b3. And here we're going to castle kingside. So even though our plan is to still play g5, our king is pretty safe here. And sometimes the king may even go to h8, but the idea is we're going to use the pawns to attack, combination of maybe bishop, queen coming out, reroute the knights over there, and really just go for this quick attack before white can make anything happen on the c-file. Yep, and uh, just the, the structure of the Dutch uh, with these super advanced pawns, for some reason, the Black King is always so safe. It's very annoying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that center is locked up. There's no e4 for white. That's a problem. Yep. So 
So now let's go with uh, bishop to b2. Makes sense. Get that bishop developed. Maybe some long-term diagonal pressure. Mm -hmm. Here we're going to play queen to f6. Um, so the reason we like queen to f6 is it puts an additional defender on this e5 square. So picture this knight on c3 moving. The bishop helps guard e5. We're ready for that now with queen to f6. And she's well placed here for the um, kingside attack that's coming up soon as well. Knight e2. Here we go. Pawn to g5. What do you think about this attack? Uh, yeah, it's already looking pretty dangerous. Um, our pieces are kind of over on this board, pointing this way. Knight's coming in, you know, queen can... But really, the only defenders are these two white knights that are already a little awkward. So just like a quick uh, just like glance at the board, like if you're walking by an OTB board and you see this, uh, see this position, you're like, oh, that looks like something. Uh, G4 is coming, kicking this knight. And so, well, maybe someday. And so there's definitely like some spice here. Our king is perfectly safe. So um, it's not like winning for black or anything, but it's scary and uh, we're advancing. And if C takes D is played by white, we're gonna always take with the E pawn pretty much. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is you wanna make sure that this F pawn is defended. So that was something I didn't mention when we played queen F6, but like, let's say we started with the knight moving here, C takes D, you can't play E takes D because the bishop wins the F5 pawn. So that's another good reason to start with queen f6. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of different move orders that white can play, but you want that f pawn defended in case of c takes d. So fast forwarding back to here, we're going to look at g3 now, most common move for white. And now we're going to kick with g4, opening up the g5 square for the h6 knight. So look at this plan, knight to f7, followed by knight to g5, targeting the weak squares in the white camp. Yep, so already a lot of holes here for white, so they need to be careful. This is the exact position you don't, like, I don't want playing the Catalan. Uh, or I guess this this isn't quite the Catalan, but similar type of structure. Like, this is not my wheelhouse, not what I want to play. So we're going to do it to white. Um, black, or sorry, white has to go somewhere. Uh, here looks like an awkward square, so they just go back. And here's our plan, knight f7. And um, white of course is still better but we have so much dynamic play so knight coming in here and uh, this is where we leave the line so um plan coming up knight g5 queen h6 and uh, maybe even a rook lift sometime rook f7 uh scoot the king over even uh what other elements are there in this comp or in this position i think you're exactly right and in the pgn we have a line that goes 19 moves deep um should we, do you want to show it here or should we just uh reference the oh, yeah PGN? yeah we can go through it okay uh, oh yeah I, I thought this was the end of the line but i guess we have a few more moves sorry so if okay so let's say rook c1 natural move by white trying to get their counter play on the c file now we can play queen to h6 and what white would love to do is try to like plug up these holes on the king side and lock it down so knight f4 is common and now we're recommending knight to f6 and even though you look at these lines and Stockfish is saying it's either equal or small edge for white, Stockfish hates the Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> but in practice, these lines score really well. And I, I think black has a lot of potential here. Um, in this case, it's about equal according to the engine. C takes D, E takes D. Now here, let's show a few moves, Jesse, that aren't the best play by white, but we'll show how to punish them. So what line, should, what line do you wanna look at for white? Um, so, like, let's say white just plays a3 and tries to, like, push these pawns up and do yeah. something annoying. Yeah, minority attack, I guess. Yeah, so we can, we had this move set up, so we played, whoops, played here, here, and now bring our knight up, b4, so they're just ignoring everything <laughs> on this side and pushing their, tri their uh, very brave and triumphant queen, uh, queen side pawns. And we're just going to sink another knight in. Uh, that's an open square right there. Probably don't want to take um, b5, <laughs> just ignoring everything. Um, I mean, I, I honor that. It's, it's hard knight. to react over there, too, a, a little bit on the king side. <laughs> yeah. Um, so knight h3, they take. Take with the queen. Uh, we're almost checkmating. Hope we have, like, bug house and can put a pawn here or something that'd be really nice um but in this position we kind of have 
everything pointing at the king. So there's going to be sacrifices ideas here sometime. A rook lift over to the h file. And uh, white is really tied up here. Look at all these pieces on the back rank. Yeah, and now we do see a stockfish advantage for black. You know, after those uh, kind of slow queenside pawn pushes, but black has an advantage now. And this is really scary. You might get some quick wins in this line out of the Dutch where it's like, oh, 20 moves in, my opponent just resigned because they were getting checkmated. Yeah. Um, it's going to be pretty common. 